Hello everyone, welcome to today, today's episode of Good Reef. It's been about five months since we've posted anything at all. Um, except for a little sort of short thing that I did the other week. But yeah, let's um, let's catch up. So uh, you'll notice right away we have this somewhat jank looking curtain here. Um, this is a temporary fixture that we've attached to the light just to keep... Um, the extreme brightness from affecting the young kids that we have come over here because we have some students who like to look at the tank where music teachers but also my nieces um, are young babies and I don't want them to burn their eyeballs so we've got that put up there for now but I think the eventual idea is to put something that looks obviously a bit nicer but I also want to redo the light rack itself to look a little bit more nice at some point in this tank's future um, we tried to make a mesh lid for it, but the um, the sizing that we came up with didn't quite work. So uh, we're still going to go down the path of maybe customization, but I think we might actually pay someone to do it properly. So I'm not, you know, I don't have to show people how bad I am at <laughs> DIY like that. Um, all the fish are doing really well. The blue tang had a couple of welts on it because it got stung by the fox face. But he's looking beautiful. Um, the wrasses are all looking real fat, which is great. Super healthy. Um, here we go. Flame Angel is looking super vibrant. Forceps is looking real nice. And some other exciting news is that this girl here is looking quite chunky and it's because these two have been preparing this little area near that monster Aptasia <laughs> um, as they're probably going to lay eggs at some point soon. So she's really, she's thickened up quite a bit um, over the last couple of weeks. So that's really exciting. Um, You'll have to take my word for it, but down there in the cave is my coral banded shrimp. You might just see a claw there, I don't know. But he's he's doing alright. Yeah, you can't really see it. We have um uh the Jester Gobi down in the back there. It's a little bit blurry, so it's not very good, but he's doing great. He's just been filter feeding in the sand, which is cool. So anthids are all popping. So if you can tell, we um, we ended up losing a significant amount of corals. Just over the last few things, we had a bacterial outbreak which killed all of our SPS. And then um, our dosing machine didn't connect to the internet and we didn't realize it was dis like it would routinely disconnect a couple of times a day and just not dose. So our parameters had just gone down a hill pretty bad. So the tank, uh, we've been working with Dave to just get our parameters back up to par, uh, stabilized, found equilibrium, and then uh, at that point, we're gonna get an ICP test just to see where things are at. But um, recently, I took apart the Vectra and I cleaned it and it's whisper quiet now which is awesome um, even at a factory it was a little bit noisy so it was really great to um, see a significant difference there um, we've cleaned the entire sump yesterday which was really good so obviously the front glass is a bit dirty because I didn't touch the outside but there's no or at least very little detritus in here now where it's before we did it yesterday, it was she was dirty, filthy. That skimmer is as clean as it's been <laughs> since um, we bought it. So what you see there is coralline algae, and um, that coralline has been the main reason why a tank has been smashing through out like no tomorrow. So um, just keeping up with the coralline has been interesting. Um, we put the bubbler on a timer now, so we have our media balls with a bubbler underneath them and what that does is it 
dislodges any uh, detritus that might have settled there. So there's a little uh, power head blowing underneath the reef mat and the reef mat is um, actually sitting on a little egg crate stand that I made. And so the idea is that if any large particles get fall through, they just get blown out. And I think that's pretty crystal clear. It's doing a good job, so I'm pretty happy with that. The other thing I've noticed too, I was cleaning this yesterday and you can see, I'll see if I can sneak that in here. You can see where the mat goes past, it gets really filthy. That's actually a proper build up of fish waste and all that stuff. So that's something that I didn't realize was happening. Um, our, the most recent test for our nitrates, it was around about 38, which had come down from 61, which is fucking high. <laughs> if you didn't know. So, um, we've just gone like really hard on getting our parameters right. So, um, nutrients coming down, our phosphates were really high, they're at 0.3, but they've come down to 61. No, oh, sorry, let me try again. They've come down to 0.2 now. And um, I dare say, after all the maintenance we did over the weekend, because we found quite a few sort of um, decaying, um, and snails and like trapped food waste and stuff just in the sump here and even like trapped in old hosing and stuff from um, our um, carbon reactor after cleaning that out I reckon we're gonna have a significant change in our nutrients the other thing too is our um, Kato is really thick she's growing growing nicely. I like to sort of turn it every day or so just to make sure the bottom um, gets plenty of light to promote that growth. And this light that we have on it is a Z light. It's for a nano tank. Um, so I'm actually going to replace it at some point with a refugium light because it is designed for soft corals and you know a nano marine um, situation. So I think we could do a little bit better you know, for this circumstance. But it's doing the job for now. Um, getting growth. So what else have we done lately? Uh, we've bought this little power head here, which right now I've just got it set up to circulate water in the sump, like we, so we don't have any dead spots. But that power head goes with the uh, this hose here, which then we drop into our new IBC. There's a towel from yesterday's water change. But we basically started getting um, seawater delivery. So we did a good size water change yesterday. I think we're, trying, we're aiming for about 150 litres a week, which would be about 10% of the tank's volume. So we just pump water out into the sink, and then we pump water in from the IBC. And using that pump makes life so much better, because otherwise it'd be um, buckets. So, yeah, what else have we done? We've changed these two um, MP40s into a master-slave situation. So, um, they're both set to alternating um, reef emulation, essentially. So, they're both emulating the reef. And the next thing I'd like to do, now that we've got our parameters on the go, <laughs> is I want to fix this. Don't judge me. Um, we have lots and lots of work to do with the electronics. But, um, let's see, the toadstool is shedding again. So he hasn't been all that happy with um, us consistently changing the parameters, but hopefully once it, we get stability and it stays where it needs to be, he'll um, come good. Um, unfortunately, this coral, which we bought about this size, it got really, really big, and now it's receded all the way back again. Um, we've had him for nearly five years, and that's uh, he's not going to make it through this, which sucks. And this Goni, we've had for the equal amount of time, and unfortunately, as you can see, we've got significant polyp bailout, and um, yeah, they, you know, they've been doing really well holding on this long, but um, they're not going to make it, unfortunately. Well, I don't think they will, but hopefully, but I doubt it. But um, some positive things are... The uh, cloves, which are the easiest things in the world to grow, are looking really nice, so that's nice. The fish are all healthy. Um, 
the zoanthids aren't too bad. What else? And um, like for a while there, we were starting to look at this tank. Uh, it was kind of like um, almost a bit demoralizing because we'd put so much time and energy, and, and Daniel had put a lot of money into this thing. And the last thing we want is for uh, for it to fail because of negligence or whatever. But we were really trying, and just nothing was happening. But um, we went to Dave and with some water samples, and he has sort of coached us through everything that we had to do to get it back to where we had it because we've only ever had nano tanks so it's so easy to get the parameters right by just doing water changes um, so this is all new for us so um, and by new I mean we've been doing it for uh, we've had this tank for just about a year now um, but it just still feels so new and um, yeah hopefully we start to see the water chemistry stabilize and things turn around so we can start having that showpiece we're looking for. Um, so after that, once everything's all set up and like I said, I might even spend this weekend redoing the uh, cabling, the power. Um, after that, the grand plan is to start getting some more corals. Um, but before we do that, I'm actually thinking about getting an IBC done just to see if there's any heavy metals or anything that's leached into our tank that we didn't know about. Because um, there were some coral deaths that were kind of a little bit too suspicious where it just wasn't, like there was nothing obviously wrong. Uh, but again, it could be anything. So um, I might even just put it down to um, being too busy to keep a, a watchful eye on things. But regardless, we're gonna get there together. Haley and I are a mad team though. We did um, we did all this cleaning last night, so she cleaned that skimmer. She took the motor apart, did all that, and I did everything else in the sump. And yeah, you guys should have seen it. It was just thick sludge at the bottom of half of these chambers. Um, which, you know, at the time I thought it was just sediment, like sand and whatever, but it wasn't. It was proper waste. So I'm actually gonna, I'm just about to do a, um, a checker, a test with a, uh, Hannah checker and hopefully that comes up it, the Hannah checker has been showing lower nutrients than the um, the spin master at the aquarium but um, yeah who's to say so we're go I'm gonna see what it what it comes up with because it comes up if it comes up below 21 then we've made a significant change because the last time I checked with the Hannah checker it was still 21. Uh, but then it was like closer to 38 at the um, at the aquarium, so we're gonna find out. But that's the that's the update, you know. No, I don't think we've got any new fish since I posted last time. Um, the leopard wrasse is looking really good, beautiful fish and super vibrant and active. And um, our Lawnmower Blenny, he's around somewhere. He's been, he's so fast. He does not like to be in the limelight. He's just, he zips around and he's out of there. Ah, oh, that's right. We've got this one, which I think Haley called it a majestic wrasse. Or, um, I think that's what it was. She'll know, she knows. But he was, he's really cool. We're so happy with him. He's a beautiful little fish. And he's been stoked, I think, in this tank. You know, a lot of these fish go into this tank and it's like, whoa, we got room, which is nice. I feel like, um, you know, because they come from the ocean and go into tiny tanks. And uh, Although it's funny with clownfish, you can chuck a clownfish into a massive tank and they just hang around one sort of foot cube. And that's about it. So <laughs> it's pretty funny, but it's good to see them all. Uh, when, they, when they have enough room to swim, you almost see natural behaviors, which is pretty cool considering... It's an aquarium at my house. And um, the other nice thing too is like, uh, as as much as it can feel like a chore, um, it's always nice for when people come around to our house and get to experience something that they've never actually seen before. Especially people who have never uh, been into the hobby or anything. They sort of live with inspiration almost, which is kind of cool. and. Yeah, we're lucky in that way. But yeah, I'm really happy about these fish though. They're so healthy. They're all eating really well too, you know. Um, 
So yeah, I can hear some some air coming through there. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too. The uh, the reef mat. I've never had a reef mat before, and um, oh, we this plumbing that we had was for a freshwater setup. So this is all different now. Um, if you'll remember, we had the trickle filter. So go to what, some of our last photo, uh, last videos, older ones, and you'll see the trickle filter. Um, and so I got this reef mat because everyone was like, "Our oh, trickle filter is no good for marine," and I didn't know, you know, um, because we again have never had a sump before. And um, so I messaged, uh, I bought this, and I got it for a hundred bucks off of Facebook Marketplace, which is awesome. Um, and I put up on the forums, you know, uh, does anyone know how to make this tank a bit quieter because it was really bloody loud. And you all remember, this tank has been loud since we've had it. And Adam from Cade, who built this tank, messaged and said, all of the plumbing for this tank has been upgraded since we bought it. And, um, and he said, we're, re we're going to replace all the plumbing for you. And I said, no worries. Well, how much? And he said, no charge, all for free. Which he didn't have to. Like that's a really great after sales support. But not only did he do that for us, that was on a Saturday. He delivered it himself on Monday before he had to go overseas. What an absolute legend. So now we have this setup where it's just so quiet, like the loudest I've I've got this um hose just running back into the sump for a bit of air movement. But that's the loudest thing on our tank at the moment, which is crazy to me. I'm so happy. Um, so yeah, the, the hardest thing about this now is just trying to dial in the reef mat because the water level in the tank gets too high and then the sump drops and then the auto top off goes off and it's just been kind of like a fine balance. And uh, since I cleaned the sump yesterday, we have to redial it in again, but... Um, I'm starting to understand how it all works, which is really cool. But there's like a hundred different things at play here, and you just don't realize it until you're in it. We had a friend come over the other day, and he was like, he's never seen under the tank before, and he was looking at it, and he's like, how do you guys keep up with all this? And I'm like, well, it's easy, you just do it. But um, in all fairness, I think if, if I was dropped in to this system today, I would have no idea. <laughs> So, it's kind of funny how we take it for granted, um, just exactly what's going on. I think if you were brand new at this, or even like a novice, you'd still be a bit confused by it all, unless you put it together yourself. And even Haley will ask me about some of the, the technical stuff with the wave makers and the lights and stuff, because she has no idea, and that's like kind of like my specialty is, is in the electronics. Or she's very, um, she's very good with the, the biology behind it. So we have our strengths. But anyway, that's, a uh, that's our reef, reef tank at the moment. So on the horizon, we have more snails to come, I think. Um, and an IBC, ah, uh, let me try again, a test, a test, uh, to see what the parameters are actually like. Um... And then from there, once we find chemi chemical equilibrium, um, we're going to start putting some nice corals in it, and this will turn into that showpiece that uh, everyone dreams of. But I've realized something, which is, everyone says it when they first start it, you don't really think about it. Go slow. Patience. And um, it's so frustrating to, to need to have patience when you just want it to look really nice, but... Really, it's the only way. And like, there's no time limit, there's no time pressures, we just want it to look nice when it, uh, when we can, basically, so. Anyway, thank you all very much. Look at this day. Huge. All right, anyway, that's enough. Bye guys.